Hey guys, what's up? Today, I'm going to be reacting to a Jamie Kennedy experiment. Wow, this is probably 20 years ago I shot this bit. This is when I shot, yeah, probably shot the pilot in late October, early November. We started shooting episodes around then. And it came out in January of 02. Yeah, wow, 20 years ago, wow. So it's coming up on its 20 year anniversary of starting to air. So yeah, we should react to these. People ask me, can I do this comedy today? And I would think, I mean, funny's funny, right? I never really thought of myself as mean spirited. I was always more big and wild and, you know, pointing out like the foibles. So this is the uh, Insta Cooker, and uh, that's what we wanted to do on the show. We wanted to do stuff where we took real live situations we parodied them. Is that the word? Parody? Parodied? We parodied. We parodied. Parody? We parodied them. We parodied. Parodied. We parodied them. Jesus Christ. This time, I, I think they're still kind of big, but infomercials were everywhere. We had the Psychic Hotline. We had all the stuff from uh, the George Foreman Grill. And we had uh, Floby and... Uh, Sham wow. So we were like, well, let's do an infomercial. The hosting was always weird for me because it felt very stiff. And it wasn't because I was stiff. It was because they made me do it a certain way. And they always blame me. And I'm like, just let me be me. And they're like, no, you got to hit your mark. And so I was always, they're always going to blame the actor. It's just the way it is. The actor is the piece of shit. It's never their fault. So, yeah. So this one is the Insta Cooker. So let's watch it. And react to it here. Thank you very much. We are back to the experiment. Yeah. Now, who here watches infomercials? Yeah. All right. I, for one, cannot look away. I don't know what they're selling. I don't need what they're selling. But I still wind up with like 80 bottles of spray on hair. Yeah. First thing they did was, you can tell my hair is orange there. Or it's like light blonde because they dyed my hair. Because they're like, just dye your hair because we're going to make you a lot of characters. So you should have like a palette. Eventually, we realized we're just going to wear more wigs. But the reason my hair is blonde is because they weren't going to dye it and so I could play different characters. And then I'm reading a lot of copy. I wanted to sit here and improvise and say stuff like I do now, and then they cut the best stuff. Well, they, that's how they didn't want to do that. I remember arguing with one of the producers. And I love him, but he was like, nope, you got to say it because the jib's going to come and hit you exactly at that moment. It's like, we're doing a comedy show. We're not doing fucking Enemy of the State. Like, it can be loose. That's why I always love Chappelle's show because I know he just sat up there, started describing the shit until it came out, and then they edited that setup perfectly, and then boom. So, but this was a little bit more structured, a little bit more say this to set it up. So, but the setups had to be clear. Anyway, here we go. So we had to do it. We had to make our own infomercial. We created a product. We built a set. Now everything's fake, except the audience... They think it's all real. Hey, everybody. How are you doing? Hi. Good to see you. How are you guys here doing in the middle? Do you people here tonight are going to be really, really important. Uh, the this is Brian Hart. He's one of our... He was our head writer. He's, yeah, he's one of the funniest people you'll ever meet. Like, he's... Of course, he's Canadian. I always say Canada exports comedy. Like, it's, like, one of its top three exports person who created this product, his name is Larry Anderson. It's a product <laughs> called the Insta Cooker. You will be seeing it later on. Your enthusiasm, your excitement will sell the product. So I will the give you a cue to start. Always, side note, the editor's always got a way to the crowd. Your enthusiasm. I think it was Michael, the editor. Okay, so here's a little, here's a little uh, tidbit for you. You guys will like this. The man in the right, right there with the glasses and the long hair looking like uh, Tom Petty is a guy by the name of John Stewart. And he's the father of an actress named Kristen Stewart. Yep, uh, that's her dad. He's one of the most legendary stage managers in Hollywood. You know, if you get him on your, your crew, you're lucky to have him. Uh, he also did Fear Factor, so I'm sure Joe knows him. Applause. Once you start the applause... Larry will run in. As soon as he runs in, make him feel really welcome. Give him a huge round of applause, and we'll take it from there. Okay, folks? Play back in five, four, three, two. Are you tired of the time-consuming drudgery of barbecuing? These guys have so many hassles. Taking up so much time. Getting the charcoal. 
cleaning that pesky grill. Tangling with the food. Was it supposed to be? So our voiceover is by Adam Small, one of our creators, executive producer, legend. Created Mad TV. He was one of the original rooms of uh, Living Color. Just, you know, just such a creative genius. Be rare or well done. <laughs> Who remembers? There's got to be a better Chris way. Tallman. Well, Great. now there is. It's the new Insta Cooker from New Bension. Throw away those <laughs> antique barbecues and cook the high tech Insta way. Insta Cooker. It's mm. the only way. And now, mm. here's Larry! Mm. Oh, a big dumb glove. Who wants me to stop and cook on this old thing? Okay, and this very popular grill by a former heavyweight champ is about to get KO'd! Yeah, it was George Foreman. He was everywhere with the grill. He made like a hundred million. And we're like, what the fuck, George Foreman? And so we came out, and I don't know why. Yeah, it was like a Harry Carey, but it wasn't. I didn't commit to it. But it was like some kind of, well, it's late night talk. Guy. Come on over, whatever that is. That's the kind of character I forget. I base it off of somebody. Food lovers, I have the answer right here. What is it? Are you ready for the marvel of the century? It's the Insta Cooker from Newventions. Newventions. <laughs> How does this fantastic new machine work? So you get this audience from Hollywood. <laughs> and so the, all his audience is a real crowd. And I think it's a mix of a crowd and like a, an audience service. But they have no idea. They think they're just at another infomercial. And they're like, okay, sure, we'll sit here for five bucks. Well, I gotta tell you, it's easy. Before you start cooking, you choose your favorite flavors from our refillable flavor tubes. Ooh. Now, you simply place the burger on the sliding tray. Three syringes from our flavor tubes pierce the meat, injecting flavor through the entire burger. <laughs> we got him to do ooh. <laughs> they said ooh. Concentrated microheat waves cook the meat from the inside out, dispersing the. I'm just saying a bunch of bullshit here. They wrote it, but I was like, it the sounds flavor good. through the whole burger. <laughs> a conventional barbecue can take up to 40 minutes to get that darn burger done, while the insert cooker takes just. Are you ready for this, people? Just 30 seconds. People were excited. Now, now so how much would you say a cooker like this would cook? Now that's crazy. That was that. That was thirty seconds. That was like, well, so we were like, "Holy shit!" Will people believe that? And you know, they did. There's so much dialogue here. I was reading off a prompter, and then and then I was like, I can't remember it all. So and then I started going with it. So it was half dialogue that they were like putting in, like as you do one of these things. But I'm willing to give you this cooker for the low low price, people of ninety nine ninety nine. But that's it. That's it. Oh, playing me? Well, fifty nine ninety nine is my final offer. Yeah, come on now. Thank goodness you didn't make me say thirty nine ninety nine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my God, I just said it, didn't I? I did. So that's the price I'm sticking with. Folks. I remember just getting so into it because I'm like, I gotta fucking go crazy to make these people believe it. See, when we were filming this shit, people don't realize it's so hectic. I got my wig on, it's itching, I got fake nose, but not here. I, I gotta make sure that I don't sound like myself, but people kind of knew me then, but they didn't know. There was, the show really made people know me, but, you know, there wasn't a lot of Scream audiences and fans in this audience, but, you know, it was... Not known yet, you know. I wasn't Jamie Kennedy. I was like that that dude from. I just remember going. I gotta be like from the Midwest, and uh, I gotta do this. I had to get crazy. But enough of that. You want to see inclusive, by the way. Talk to talk to fucking the woke people. You've never seen a more I I just love the Hollywood audience. I'm telling you, that's why I love KTLA. I love Sunset Gower because it's right in the heart of Hollywood. It's a little east. It's just right in the hood. I mean, black people, white people, gay, straight, Asian, Mexican, trans. We all we had everybody in our crowds. It was and they were just so 
loving. They love to laugh. Our show is low-key super inclusive. Maybe in action, right? Yeah. All right. I'm going to need two This mouths. wig, I said, I want a wig to look like my mother. So they looked at pictures of my mother. And they made me, I look like my mother. <laughs> After a perm. My mother would fucking get. This look like this lady, Margo. Margo. You remember these things? They put, out, they put a fucking huge egg on my mother's head. And, like, and my mother would be like, come to Margo's. And pick me up and come take me home. So I'd like go pick my mother up at Margo's. And my mom would be under like an egg thing. And they would come out and the fucking egg thing would be like, Pfft. And my mom was like, how do I look? And it was like the shape of the egg fucking dryer. And I'm like, oh, that's really good. And she's like, I know, I just got done. But literally, like, that's what ladies would do in the 70s. They like, get a big fucking perm head. So I'm like, I want to look at my mother. Do we have some volunteers? Guess what time it is, folks? It's time for an old Now this guy's a stunt man. Yeah. Like, the crowd thinks it's all real. Count it down with me, people. Here we go. That guy's the Five. mark. Cook off. This was like our first baby stunt we did on the show. I'm making leaves. Because, like I said, I'm laughing now. I never see these things. When I do it, it's so stressed. Between wardrobe, makeup, hair, rehearsal. It's not any. It's like prosthetic. It's different than movies or any TV. And all the pressure and the rewrites and the legal battles and what can you say. And then the crowd is in on part of it. They're not. They think they're for an infomercial taping. So that had to be. And then we fuck with the, a crowd that's savvy. So then this is real now. They're freaked out. We make the fake products. We have a stunt. We had to have a safety meeting. So it's just there's nothing, there's nothing fun when we're filming it. Okay. It's a, it's a fucking pain. And it's. It's tense and it's pressurized, but you know, sitting back now, I can enjoy it. Um, so I just remember that crowd was tripped out. <laughs> he, he went running. <laughs> There's Talman. So look how fucking good we are. We're so super meta. Talman's a legendary improv actor. He's just a great actor, but he's known for improv. He was the guy in the infomercial. Then we paid him again, and he came back and played the roadie that put out the fucking fire. I mean, this shit is like the MCU. We've got fucking metaverses happening here, and they didn't know it. <laughs> this is the beginning of, like, my... my the tone I wanted for the show because this is like one of our first bits we ever did and so it was like showing breaking the fourth wall that's what I always thought would be interesting for the show and it's like you know showing this is before the office and before Modern Family but it was like showing these power structures and people and creators when they're having a bad day uh, and so and so that's what I wanted to do in front of the crowd and so and so they could hear me fucking up and see what we would do and this was a test of what would they put up with. Now I have a question. Who here wants to buy an Instacooker? <laughs> well, let's see what the audience decides when we return. Sorry, I'm with security. We got word that there was an accident. That guy came in here. He put out some can of soda, spilled it in the cooker, blew up. That's a lie! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back to the experiment. The instant cooker just blew up. Now, I don't know about you guys, but if something blows up in somebody's face, I'm out. <laughs> Are you guys out? Yeah! Well, they're in. <laughs> That's so like a fuck it. At this time, Saul Good, I just finished Saul Good, or I think it came out. And that was Ehrlich. Ehrlich, who had a, a little part in this movie, Richard Ehrlich, LA legend. And he would always say, he said, I'm out. I'm out. So then we came up with, they're in. Can you go back to your seat, please? 
He ran off so quick. <laughs> Things happen. So he's the guy in the infomercial, and now he's playing the producer, which is awesome. And the audience doesn't realize it. It's a totally different character. <laughs> They're hearing it. This is so good. This crowd is so fucking legit. We're going to take that meat over there, and we're going to go, and we're going to grill it with because they always come out perfect. They cook it on the sheet. Okay? We're going to obviously, go, we're going to need another volunteer if there's anybody here. Huh. Oh, no, mm. no, you mm. know what, Dan? We're not doing that. We're not doing that. This is the third one that's blown up. And the third one is blown up. Okay, well, remember I, the <laughs> I remember just taking, I remember like the audience was kind of dead and they were just kind of looking like bumps on a log and I didn't know how good reactions would be when you cut to them. And so I just had to make sure I sold it. So I remember I just taking balls of meat and I would just throw it as a reaction to get to do something. That's why I was just going, and the can was loud. So I go, and people would be like, what we're going to do now is we're going to get to the, uh, we're going to jump ahead. And, yep. uh, we just want to get a few people to do some testimonials. <laughs> Talking about how they use the product and enjoy using the product. Okay, I have 20 bucks. Here you go. <laughs> Look at these people. <laughs> Yo, man, we fucking had the best audience. <laughs> talk about her in the office all the time she's so goddamn funny god she made this sketch real people put in awkward situations there's nothing funnier if i could just never do a calm a joke and just let things happen i would never do jokes i only do jokes because you're supposed to like i hate it i'd rather walk on stage for an hour and see what happens oh god oh she's like oh, oh. Oh! 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 This new product is called the Insta Turk. Oh! Twenty pound Turk. Insta Turk. Excuse me. Oh, this is my guy. On the set here. No, the guy's fine. This dude was so good. His security guard. God, I forget his name. He's a great actor. We had him on a lot. Michael, we tell him it's fine. Uh, no, he's not fine. He almost lost an eye. He almost lost an eye. Oh. We need to fill out a witness statement, a medical form. It's for insurance purposes. So, what happened? I'll tell you what happened. Wow. That guy came in here. Now, this is the next thing that you always do. When you want to add an extra climax, always blame the mark. So the hidden camera trick. And then that will cause more conflict. So we already are doing more than what people are used to in a hidden camera show. We're adding a character, a believable situation. We put the people within the bit. And now they're all involved. And then we blame the mark. And then that gets people crazy. And then you're going to get a great reaction. What else? A can of soda spilled it in the cooker? Blew up. That's not true. And then the locals will jump in. So now you know they're really in the hook. She's like, that's a lie. That's a lie. So it's like, now it's real. This is really good. Like, you can tell the litmus test. You, it's really worth it. Yes, it is. You brought a thing onto the lot, and you, you blew it up. And that's when you're not allowed to bring sodas on the lot. You saw them. You blew it up. Did everybody see him do it or not? I always lie. I'll tell you what happened. Here's what the problem is. Check out the door. 
security. We can only come in with keys. They didn't check you for Coca Cola, Victor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't check you for that. That's another trick you always do. When you get their names, you always use their name when you're accusing them, and then they get really personal. So Victor, Coca Cola. This is when I. This is my where I thrive. I just make up shit. I just make up crazy shit, and people just believe it, and I'll just commit to it. Because all about all you have to do is commit. Just commit. Whatever you do in life, commit, and people believe it. Have any machine pasta. Well, then maybe Victor did. Maybe you should take his name since he knows all about yeah, what happened. Yeah, 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 yeah. all of this. Yeah. Okay. Well, when so you came up on stage, Victor, yeah. how did it blow up? I don't know. I was over there. He was over there. We neither one of us had either anything in our hand. Okay. So then maybe when you came up over here, you tripped the wire, blew it up, and cost me a half a million dollars. Well, I thought it was because it was a Coca Cola. Mm. So I'm gonna tell you what happened. Right here, we brought this whole audience in here. They thought they were going to watch an infomercial, but they're part of my experiment. It's a new hidden camera show in the WB called the Jamie Kennedy Experiment. <laughs> and there's <laughs> fucking. <laughs> this is an example of Jack Black, which I should have did in the Enemy of the State video. He he did this joke one time on the set of Enemy of the State, and it was so funny to this day. It sticks with me. He would say, are we going to have a moment in this movie where we have to say the title of the movie naturally? Because I think the movies were doing that in the 90s. And, like, we would do rehearsal, and we would look at the screen, and Tony would let us improvise, and Jack Black would be like, he's like, this guy's so wanted. It's like he's some sort of... Enemy of the state. <laughs> That's what we did here. The WB really wanted us to brand. So it's like, you're on my new hidden camera show called the Jamie Can Experiment on the WB weeknights and Thursday. Like I was doing in bit promos. And there's a camera here. There's a camera there. Well, there's a camera. It was so chaotic. That's all network going. Brand new shit. Let people know what the fuck is going on. I was always like, just end it weird. Oh, look at her face. Oh! Oh! Look at her face. Oh! She's hilarious. Oh my God. Victor got it. Look, they're so happy. They are so happy. The one lady got mad. She's like, okay, I thought this was real. That's the stunt guy. Oh. Star. That's why I think my show worked, you know, because I always felt like I was a man of the people. You know, I still do. And I feel like I'm a man of the people that just, you know, do good. I'm your neighbor. I think I should have been on for 20 years. Um, even though I, I, one time I was like, oh, I don't have to do it that long. And then. You know, I think, like, I was, like, a live-action family guy. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, like, evergreen content, watch, escape. A lot of reasons why we got canceled, and then a lot of reasons why we didn't get picked up again. But I'm, like, comedy judge Judy. You know what I mean? I'm always there when you need it. But this was, uh, this brings me back. It's just a wonderful time in my life. We would laugh all day. I mean, shoot days were tense, but you'd see the producers laughing, even though sometimes, I'm, a lot of times I'd be going through hell just to, to execute it. Because we didn't get it, we were fucked. You know, seven hundred thousand dollars online here, each app, and I I was the fucking center of it, and I had to fucking get it, and I, if I didn't get it, we didn't have a fucking episode, and I'm gonna get fucking blamed and fired and all this shit. But at the end of each week, man, we did these tapings. God, it was awesome. And then we would go into network and executives and fucking the president. He was the best. He would just take us out, and we'd fucking go to Morton's. We'd buy the whole back room. And Big ass bottles of wine and fucking center cut tomahawk shakes and fucking truffle mash. And they'd keep that place open as long as we want. And we would just drink and laugh and fucking eat steak. I know. I know. It's fucking awesome. I just love that. And we would just laugh and just say, how are we making money doing this? How are we getting paid to do this? Do what you do. Do what you love. And the rest will follow. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Doing an in-app promo right now. You know what to do. Subscribe, like it, comment. I'm going to be doing more of these. Much love. Peace. I don't feel like anyone's talking. They're blockers. That's not why I came to Hollywood. Fucking backwards. Oh, shit. I hate the private player.